Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. This video, sponsored by, Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning community, with more than 27,000 classes in design, video editing, motion graphics, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join any class, and take them anywhere, anytime. Learn, collaborate, or even teach a class by your own. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career. Skillshare is the best option for you. Visit the link from the description below, and first 500 people will get two months for free. In case, you don't want to follow this tutorial, you can download this free template, from the link in the description. So, let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it Motion Banner. As always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution, at 60 frames per second, to make the animation smoother, and the duration is 10 second. Now the first step is to create a new solid layer. I am calling it the background, and choosing a bright grey, or almost white color for it. You are free to choose any color you want. Let's create a wave effect now. Make sure to unselect any selected layer, then go to the tools, and select the rectangle tool. Please note, my fill is set to a solid color, and my stroke is set to none. I am using a dark color for the fill. You can use any color you want. Now create a rectangle. I am keeping this size. Let's rename this layer as the wave. Then go to the effects and the presets, here search for the wave wrap. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the wave height value to 50, and then change the wave width value to 200. This is how it is going to look now. Let's change the wave height value to 20, to make the wave height smaller. Now we have one problem with this effect. I cannot place this shape layer in the corner, it will show up these artifacts on top. So let's fix it. Pre-compose this wave layer. I am calling it wave comp. And then hit OK. Now we can place it anywhere we want. Let's open rotation, and change the rotation value to negative 45 degrees. And then place it into the corner. You can also adjust the scale value if you need. Cool. This is how it looks now. Let's move to the next step. Import your product image into the project. By the way, you can download this image, from the link in the description. Select this layer, and place it onto the timeline. The product size is huge, so I am changing the scale value of it. I am keeping the size around 40%. Now pre-compose it. I am calling it the product, and choose move all attributes into the new composition. Cool. Let's place it right here. This is going to be the position of my product. Now go to around 2 second position. Select your product, and open its position. Here, add a keyframe on it. Now go to the 1 second position, and change the Y position value to a lower number. This is a simple position animation. Now select both keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Open graph editor, and if your graph does not look like this, then right click here, and choose edit speed graph. Now change the curve to something like this. Cool. Switch back to the main timeline, 
And now turn on the motion blur for this layer. In case this switch tab is not available here, press F4 to switch between. Click on the motion blur icon, and then activate it from here. Cool. Let's create some shadow. Go to the tools, and select the ellipse tool. I am just using the fill, with a black color. Now create an ellipse, right below the product. I am keeping this shape. Make sure the width of this shape is same as the width of the product. Let's rename this layer as the shadow. And then again go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the fast blur. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the blurriness value to around 40%. It will make the shadow smoother. But this is not looking better, so let's select this layer, and then expand the ellipse one. Now open transform, and unlink the scale. Then change the Y scale value to 10%. And it will look better now. Cool. Now we are moving to the next step. I am making a color background for the product. Let's select the background layer, and make a duplicate of it. I am calling it color background. Now go to the effects and the presets. This time search for the gradient ramp. Apply it onto the layer, and let's change the color of it. I am using this color combination. You are free to choose any color you want. Now, make sure the layer is selected. Then go to the tools and select the pen tool. Zoom out a little, and then create a mask around this position. Connect the mask with the first point, and it will look like this. Let's copy this gradient ramp effect. Then select the wave comp, and paste it right here. Now the wave is also having the color. You can always change the color shade position just by moving this anchor. Select the color background layer, and I am going to adjust the mask off it. In case you are not able to see the mask, make sure to click here, to activate the mask. Now select the anchor point, and change the mask to something like this. Cool. Let's adjust the shadow of it. Go to the last position keyframe of the product and then select the shadow layer. Open opacity, and then add a keyframe on it. Now go to around 30 frames backwards, and change the opacity value to 0%. Select both keyframes, right click on it, and easy ease them as well. Cool. Let's add some movement to the color background as well. Select the color background layer, and then open its position. Now add a keyframe on it. Let's place this keyframe on two and half second. Now change the X position value to a higher number, so that it will move to the right. This is the basic animation. Now select both keyframes, and easy ease them as well. Turn on the motion blur, and this is how it looks now. Nothing much, but quite interesting. Let's open Graph Editor, and change the color background curve to something like this. Cool. Now we are moving to the next step. Go to the project window, and then create a new composition. I am calling it Ribbon. And using the same setting as the previous composition. Now go to the tools, and select the pen tool. Please note. I am using the fill to none, and the stroke to a solid color. I will be using the stroke, instead of fill. Now click here, to add the first point. Now press and hold the shift key on your keyboard. And click here to make a straight line. Let's increase the stroke value to around 100 pixels, and it will look like this. Let's rename this layer as the base. As it will be used for the bottom part. Now go to the top window, click on this add and choose the trim path. Now open the trim path, and we will use this end for the animation. Make sure you are in the first frame. And then change the end value to 0%. Here add a keyframe on it. Now go to around 30 frames forward, and increase the end value to 100. 
This is how it going to look now. Cool. Let's select this layer, and make a duplicate of it. Use the shift, plus up arrow key, to place it right above the bottom layer. I am calling it top. Minimize the layers, and this is how it looks now. You can always keep the distance which you want. Simply select the layer, and use the shift plus arrow key. Let's create the middle layer now. Select the top layer, and make a duplicate of it. Let's call it middle, and place it below of all layers. Now change the stroke color to the dark color, to create some depth. Let's add a background for now, we will remove it later. Now, select the middle layer, and you should always use the dark shade for this layer. Now we will be making a slop for the middle stroke layer. So go to the tools, and select the pen tool. Grab this anchor point. Here, I am trying to match their corner. Zoom in a little, and place the corner, at the exact location. Now for the second anchor point, select the move tool, and then grab this anchor point. Let's match their corner as well. And this is how it going to look. Now we just need to adjust the animation. Select this middle layer, and then open keyframes. Now expand this layer, and remove all keyframes from the end. We will use the start instead. Cool. This animation is going to start, after the base layer finished animating. So let's select the base layer, and open keyframes. Go to the last keyframe position, and then select the middle layer. Here add a keyframe on the start. Go to around 30 frames forward, and change the start value to 0%. Now select the top layer, and open its keyframe. Just place it onto the first second position. Because we already have the keyframes on it, so we don't need to change anything here. Cool. Check the animation, and this is how it looks now. Not bad actually. Now select all keyframes. Right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Cool. Now we just need to adjust the curves for each layer. So let's minimize this middle layer, to get some room. Now select the base layer keyframe, and then open graph editor. Here, change the curve to something like this. This step can be confusing, because we need to adjust the movement of the layers. Select the middle layer keyframes, and now I am going to make the opening slower, and the end slower as well. Now select the top layer keyframes, and for this layer, I am going to make the opening faster, and the end slower. Cool. Switch back to the timer line, and see how this looks now. This looks good to me. Let's change the color of these strokes, I am using this red color for it. You are free to choose any color you want. Just keep the middle stroke dark. Now switch back to the main timer line, and then place it on top of all layers. Let's open this composition, and hide the background, because we don't need it. Switch back to the main timer line, and then select this layer, and place it right here. Cool. Now choose a position, where you want this layer to start appearing. I think it will look fine here. Now we are going to add some text to it. Open this ribbon comp, and then go to the tool, and select the text tool. You can download this font from the link in the description. Make sure to place it in the center of the ribbon, and now we are going to animate it. Go to the position, where you want your text to start animating. Now go to the effects and the preset, here search for the large scale. Apply it onto the layer, and your text will start animating right away. Cool. Let's open keyframes, select both keyframes, right click on it. Go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Bring the last keyframe closer to the first keyframe, to make the animation faster. And yes, it is looking better now. Let's make another duplicate of this layer, 
and I am going to place it on this second stroke. And also, change the text for this layer. Cool. Now I am going to adjust the timing of this text animation. The first text should start after the stroke finished animating. And the second text should start at this position. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks now. Now the last step. Go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the transform effect. Apply it onto the ribbon layer, and then change the skew value to minus 15. Adjust the position. And now we are good to go. Ram preview this, and our animation is complete, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day. Download unlimited After Effects templates, royalty free sound effect, stock footage, and more. Visit Envato Elements. Check the link in the description.